All right, here we go. OG Spice One. What's good? Yeah. Man, uh, actually, you know, everything. You know, um, I've just been out here riding, man, doing my thing, trying to make myself more visual. That's what's up. Listen, man, I'm a longtime fan. <laughs> oh, a longtime yeah. fan. And, uh, you know, you've been, you've been featured on Vlad TV before, but this is the first time we're actually face to face. You know, we've yeah. done some phone interviews, other people have interviewed you, but this is the first time mm. we're really sitting down. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Yeah, hell yeah. I was, I, 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 when I walked in, I was like, that got to be him with the beard. <laughs> Vlad got the beard. That's right. You. No one recognized me, which yeah. is cool. <laughs> I can move around in silence. Yeah. <laughs> so you grew up in the Bay. Yeah, yeah, so Hayward. Originally Hayward, and then did you move to Oakland or? Um, I just like back and forth a lot. Of, uh, like my my fam moved, my family moved out there. I would go stay with them. Um, my dad moved to Ninety First in Bancroft, so mm. I would go out there with him, and he'd go to a few little uh, to the Uhuru house to a few Black Panther meetings, and then take me back to Hayward, and you know it was a lot of back and forth. So your dad was actually a Black Panther? He um, he did a lot of most motivational speaking. Okay. Uh, I don't think he actually um, was in the, but my uncles was. <laughs> so, I okay. Mean, you know. Okay, so you grew up in that type of yeah. environment. Now, you know, you actually started rapping in high school. Mm -hmm. So so before high school, what were you doing? You know, what I mean, because when you look at your music very gangster, you know, very drug dealing, very street, you know, what was your background before you actually got into all that? Um, I say maybe, um, I was real hip hop, man, just hip hop, uh, break dancing, um, trying to do graffiti, trying to do graffiti, yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to DJ or whatever, but um, I was, I really excelled at, at break dancing a lot, you know, um, and I always, was vocal. I always sang or or something, you know. Um, but you know, break dancing was my thing, and 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 gang and, and gangster, you know, like little little gang violence, little even in elementary, you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> well, because in the Bay you have no Crips and Bloods. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just have neighborhoods. Yeah, and it's like you know, you 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 find some some dudes that's just as sick as you and. You just like oh, that's raw, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? you ain't no Crips and no Bloods, but you y'all like you know 10, 15 deep, and you know we, you know, at, at, in elementary, you know we we had jump we did we would have jumped a grown man, you know we wasn't even tripping, <laughs> we was some little riders, you know what I'm saying? So, like were you getting busted back then at all? Um, yeah. Arrested? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you were doing like youth authority stuff or? Um. I, the, the worst thing I did was try to rob a bank when I was like 14. You tried to rob a bank at 14. <laughs> uh, how, how many people were involved in this uh, genius, uh, it was, it genius was, move here? It was me and, and, and two of my friends. <laughs> we was trying to, you know. Um, Explain to me this conversation when y'all agreed this is this was a good idea. Um, all right, he, you know, one of the homies was like. Uh, you know, he said he, he he had been doing it, you know what I'm saying? So in okay. and, and, and the whole, you know, little neighborhood was talking about it. And so we was like, okay, you know. Then for some reason he came to us and he was like, you know, I guess, you know, like you find somebody just as sick as you are. So we come over there to me and my homie and we like, you know, shit, let's roll, you know, let's let's do it. We 14 and you know, you know, we ain't, you know, rich or nothing, you know. So we think about money too. And he like, you know, um, you know, he drew up a little plan, a little, <laughs> he drew up a little plan on a piece of, um, a piece of bag, a bag from uh, a Safeway or Lucky or whatever. He drew a little, a little plan on there. My mom still got the plan. She, held, <laughs> she holds on to it and she shows it to me when I go over there. And, uh, Remember this? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, we broke in, you know, we waited till night and we, we broke into the, to the bank. Like, so you smashed we, the, the front door? Well, um, we crawled on the roof and got through the um, top of the roof. Okay. And the, um, the alarm went off. It was a silent alarm. Right. And we didn't know that, you know. And um, it was, it, the, the worst part about it is that, you know, one of my friends got killed. You know, the police came in there, you know. Oh. Yeah, they came in there and came in and me and my, they shot my friend. Like right in front of you? No, we heard it. We told him, you know, we went up to the top of the, you know, the roof, and we like, 
you know, come on. He was like, I'm oh, going. oh, so you guys are already on your way out. Mm -hmm. We told him to, we told him to come on, and he said he didn't want to come. He said he was going to hide, and he was going to um, hide in the bank. Yeah. He, well, how, how much money did you guys grab at this point? Um, we didn't really get a chance to grab. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> The alarm went off, and you know he had a, he had a plan, but I guess he didn't wasn't expecting a silent alarm to go off, and so you know we was maybe I'm 14 years old, so my, my friend, you know, I, I said, you know, let's just I told my friend I'm like, dude, let's just go to 7-Eleven and get some Slurpees. We kids, let's just walk home with some Slurpees. They ain't, they gonna drive right past us, and I was right. We went to 7-Eleven and got some Slurpees and walked home, and they, the cops just drove right past us. With lights on and everything but uh, we went home and uh, I went to sleep and uh, maybe a few hours later my friend was throwing rocks in my window telling me that they shot the police shot my friend and um, man it was crazy the whole school the whole neighborhood was looking at me like a bank robber <laughs> so did the police know that you did it yeah they the, the feds came to my house that, like the next morning oh because they looked at the camera footage and yeah and they asked me if I seen the dude and, you know, told my mom that he was dead and somebody got shot and everything. And, you know, she came up there and beat my ass with all kind of shit. Anything she could find, she beat my ass with it after she figured that out. And, um, you know, uh, I guess um, my uncle, he, he had a little money, so he paid for some attorney fees and stuff like that and made me come out there with him in San Francisco and live with him for a while, for a couple of weeks or whatever. Okay, so you got a, an attorney, and what happened ultimately with the case? Um, I guess the uh, judge was like, you know, either, either, either uh, my uncle um, paid him enough money to leave us alone, or he was like, his friend is dead, that's probably enough, you know. I don't think he's gonna do that no more at <laughs> anything right. time soon. So, you know, it just kinda, you know, went away and it never wow. like went on my um record you, you got lucky. I don't think. Very, very, very lucky. Because you could have been tried as an adult. Yeah. And been given what, twenty years or something? Yeah. I mean, well Well, I, I guess you guys didn't kill anybody, so there's no Murder, yeah. you know, what I mean, like you guys, one of your guys got killed, so you can't be blamed for that, right? That that murder. Some, somebody I mean, got shot killing. and killed. It was just the whole thing was just bad, like looked really bad in my neighborhood. Like everybody was like, "There's the the uh, bank robber and pointing at me," you know. So from the from that point on, it was like, you know, my whole neighborhood was like, "Okay, that that dude is not <laughs> around him," you know. Okay, so that was the craziest thing that you got into. Yeah. At, at that age. Did that make you, you know, make you rethink this whole life of crime kind <laughs> of, uh, you know, goal that you had at that point? It made me not want to rob a bank no more. <laughs> I was like, nah, we, well, I guess that ain't working. So you moved to San Francisco. Did you continue to get in trouble at all? Nah, because my uncle was like, you know, I guess you want some money, little nigga. So <laughs> I'm going to pay you to work in my, uh, my bar. So, you know, I worked in this bar for a while and you know, um, cleaned up and, you know, the bathrooms and stuff. And, you know, and he was like paying me a lot of money at that age. Like, that was cool. You know, my okay. uncle, you know, and, and good looking. You know, he rest in peace right now is my Uncle Luther, you know. Yeah. So, at what age did you actually start rapping and start really starting to take it seriously? I think I started, um, I started actually writing when, uh, when I heard, uh, when I heard Six in the Morning. Ice tea. Yeah, I was I was um, maybe sixteen, mm. and um, I was at the dope I was on the dope track at the house at the at the trap um, in, in the trap um, selling my dope or whatever and shit and uh, motherfuckers say um, Elroy Elroy they rolling they rolling and I heard them and I'm like oh shit so I, you know I literally. Uh, Ran across the bathroom floor with my fresh new Adidas and hopped out the back window and um, shook the police, you know. And um, the next morning I heard a, <laughs> a, a six in the morning police at my door, fresh Adidas squeaking across the bathroom floor. And I was like, damn, you know, you mean I could, I could write about that shit I did last night and, 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 and get paid for it? Like, you know, so. Okay, so I mean, if, if that's at 16, you say you moved in with your uncle, so you started slanging dope at what point? Well, um, 
Well, he well he moved me back. I went back to my mom. Okay, and that's when all that started. Yeah, I went back out there, <laughs> and uh, you know, the, they just handed me the sack, and I you know went to the spot and start getting it in or whatever. Um, and this was crack. Yeah, definitely right, crack. Because this was the late eighties. Mm-hmm. Eighty six, uh, eighty seven. Which was that was the crack era. Yeah, that's when it was. It was that's when it was cracking. That's when it was cracking. Right. <laughs> that that's when you actually saw, you know, like the crack millionaires, and yeah. you know, like that's when people were really making a lot of money before the government yeah. really figured out what was going. That's on. when we had, you know, uh, Free Ray Rick, Felix Mitchell, and you know, I, you know, in in my area, you know, it was Felix Mitchell, Sixty Ninth Village, and okay. uh, the Six Nine Boys. You know, they was uh, Lil D came after that. Yeah, well, that's that's Felix's nephew, right? So you know, and and Lil D was cool talking to him. You know, I, I actually talked to him when he was he was locked up, and he gave me some real some real good advice. He just said, "Keep doing your music, man. Don't don't worry about nothing. Nobody say about you. You know, don't don't be out here flipping out in these streets." He taught me some real good good shit, man. You know, to to be if he would have said, "Man, you know, fuck them niggas, go smash them," if I would have did that. But he told me something smart that, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm glad he told me that shit, man. Well, I mean, Felix Mitchell and Lil D were literally moving millions of dollars yeah. of cocaine through, through the Bay. So, yeah. you know, and he got, what, 30 years or something? Mm -hmm. I mean, he got out recently. You know, we, we actually yeah. talked, uh, you know, a few months ago. Yeah, but, I was uh, happy to see him, man. Gave him yeah. a big hug. We did a show out in, in East Oakland at the, at the pier, and it was cracking, man. Dope. Yeah, fun. So how heavily did you get into the, into the cocaine at that point? Um, I really didn't, um, I didn't really get a, a chance to, you know, sink my teeth into it and, 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 and um, touch on no key, kilos or nothing at that point of time. Because, um, by, you know, I, I 16, uh, maybe 17 or 16, right in the middle of that era, um, I was getting in a lot of fights and shit, you know, and, um. I got stabbed in my hand, and you know it was like a lot of talk around, uh, around, and, and uh, I run into Two Shorts uh, manager's niece. Okay. And she Two like Shorts you know manager's niece. <laughs> yeah. And she like you know I heard about you know, I heard you be getting down and like you know not rapping. She heard she like she heard I be scrapping like. Yeah. And you know back then I'm with my homies and I'm like why you need somebody fucked up like you know. Who we gotta like? Where you? Who you good? Like we gotta fuck somebody up. <laughs> she was like, Nah, not nothing like that. Um, you know, I heard you 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 rap and shit, and I was like, Yeah. She's like, Well, my uncle is, is Too Short's manager. I'm gonna tell him to give you a call. His name is Randy Austin. And I said, Cool. You know, and I you know I wasn't really tripping. I go home and um, you know, Randy calls, and my mom was like, You know, somebody named Randy Austin called here, and they was looking for you. And I was like, Yeah, whatever. And I. He called back and I pick up the phone and he like, yeah, man, we coming to pick you up from school tomorrow, man, what time you get out? And I'm like, you know, this ain't fucking too short, man. Who the fuck is this nigga? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on, man, you know, I'm, all right, man, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, okay, cool, I get out of three, man. And then he, I hung up and like 10 minutes later, short calls. And he like, man, yeah, man, we finna come get you from the house, man. You know what I'm saying? What's, what time you get out of school, man? And I'm like, you know, you know, I'm trying to be cool, just as cool as, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, I get out at like three o'clock, partner. <laughs> you know, we having a cool contest and shit. <laughs> Cause at that point, Too Short had, uh, uh, was Born to Mac? Yeah, out. yeah, Born to Mac. That, that was a monster. Yeah, with Freaky Tales and Freaky all that Freaky Tales, Dope Fiend Beat. Yep, Dope that, Fiend Beat, yeah. My favorite Too Short song to this day. I reached out to Short, cause you know, I've been cool with yeah, that's, forever. Yeah, that's like an unk, man. That's an yeah. uncle right there. That's an uncle show. He said that he used to pick you up from school, uh, pick you up uh, at your house after school. Yeah. And he, he used to talk to your mom and, yeah. like, promise to bring you home early. Yeah. Because your mom, I guess, didn't really trust the whole situation. Yeah, she she was like, you know, you got homework and shit to do. You got a lot of, you know, you want you to be in school, you know, this, this rap shit. You know, you might have to go to the Army. I don't know what the hell you're going to do. You know? <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I better write the hell out some raps because I ain't going to the army. Okay, were you Spice One at that point? I was, um, I was MC Spice. Okay, <laughs> and I guess Spice stands for Sex Pistols, Indo, Cash, Cash and, and Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. kind of feel like you made that acronym after the fact. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the name was already there. It's like, all right, what does it stand for? So the 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 original reason why my name is Spice is because it was um you know it was it was this pimp named Spicy Mike mm. in my neighborhood and you know he used to let me drive his car and shit all the time you know what I'm saying I thought he was the shit he let me drive it to the store and you know I could like talk to a female and say hey girl you know let's go to the beach you know and he, I could, I got a car she, you know so you know eventually I just named myself Spice after that cat. Mm. Last time I talked to him, he was in, he was locked up. Uh, I ain't talked to him in a while. You know, hope if you see this interview, what's up, Mike? <laughs> Spicy Mike. You don't actually sign it too short. Yeah, I signed to too short in uh, 80, 86. I signed to him that year. There's an album out called The Dangerous Crew. Okay. And you can see a picture of me on the back. Me and Fote, I'm on the back. Um, Sixteen years old. Uh, I was walking around school passing out the record. Um, the song I had on there was called Leave It To Me. Let's see if I can look this up. Yeah. The Dangerous Crew album. Don't Try This At Home? Mm-mm. Let's go back further than That's that. That's further than that. Yeah. Don't uh, Try This At Home was the, f- mm. the first Dangerous Crew album with everybody. But the first Dangerous Crew was right around the time Short had did Born to Mac and all of that. We was real young. Fote was like... 18, I was like 16. It's got a skull and bones on there, white and red, well, uh, white, red background with white skull and bones on it. Oh, I can't find it. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's, All right, anyways, we, we could, uh, I could look it up later. Yeah, you look at in trip, like I was 16, dude. Wait, well, is, it, is it this thing here? Yep, that's it. Okay. That's it. That's the Dangerous Crew album, right? Yeah, there. that's the original Dangerous Crew uh, Okay, I don't know if there's logo a, and I don't album. know if there's a back cover to this, let me see. Yeah, I, I don't see a back cover, unfortunately. It's um, crazy. Okay, you're on the back of that. Okay, so you start rolling with Too Short, and Ann Banks is fucking with you. Yeah, Ann Banks came in the picture. I think I had just turned. Um, after we did that Dangerous Crew album, we, you know, me and Short, you know, we hung around. I seen him around, but he was blowing up, you know, so. And I was actually developing, you know, um, I think I turned maybe, what, since 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, five years later, mm. I run into, to, you know, I'm the five years, years of Spice One development, riding around, rapping and doing my thing. Uh, I turned 20 years old, I say maybe four years later, because I still had, to, when I signed my independent deal with Triad Records and Georgette Willis, I was only 20 years old. I had to have my mom sign the contract. So, okay, and that's then, when I met Banks. Okay, and you put out the EP, Let It Be Known. Mm-hmm. And Banks did most of it. Yeah, he um, like the 187 proof beat and the uh, Welcome to the Ghetto. Um, I had did them myself, but I had to have Banks come in there and you know do his put his and banks to it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Once he did that, it was on, you know, he tweaked the, the bass and the, the 808 and all of that shit. Oh yeah, no, and banks uh, contributed to the Bay Area sound so much. A lot. A lot, really kind of was the Bay Area sound. The really whole sound. Really set the bar for everybody else. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you put out this EP independently and then you get signed to Jive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the Once I put, 187 proof out, um, man, that was all that was playing. You know, it, that was all that was playing on the radio. That was all cars was driving by playing. That's all I heard, cars driving past playing. Um, and uh, the trip about that song, 187 proof, is that I, um, you know, that was the song that, 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 that catapulted me into, you know, stardom at all, you know, uh, for the, from the beginning. And I prayed, I prayed, to be a rap star, went to sleep, dreamt I was a rap star, <laughs> walking down the street, um, it was some dude playing some music, and, 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 and you know, I walk up to him and I'm like, you know, what's that you playing? And he was like, Spice One, this the new shit. And this is me, this is my dream. Uh-huh. He's like, Spice One, you know, this the new shit. And I'm like, you know, some said, man, stick your head in the back of the, in the car to see what, what made you famous. So I stuck my head in the car and I, and I heard um, you know, the, the music to 187 Proof. And then I, I, uh, I listened a little bit more and I heard um, E Had the Nine and J the AK. And I'm like, you know, and I woke up. 
And I'm like, you know, what the fuck is that? You know, who the fuck is E and who the fuck is J? And, you know, and it all came back to me like E and J is alcohol. And, you know, that the math started kicking in. E and J is alcohol. What if they sold dope on the street called Hennessy? And I kept on going, you know. Mm -hmm. So I write 187 proof. And um, here I am. You know, I, I, uh, and I was just saying, you know, there is a God. Like, because what was that shit? Like, I, I sat there and prayed to be a rap star and went to sleep and dreamt about a song, woke up, woke up, woke up, wrote the song, and here I am talking to you, you know, years later. Okay, so the song starts to blow up around Oakland. It's like an underground hit, basically. Yeah. You know, because I remember back then, like, I remember, like, APG, Action Pack Gangsters, was like underground tapes that yeah. we would, you know. That's who went and found the the lady, Georgette Willis. They were signed to her. Mm. And they told her, because I used to go over there and rap with them all of the time. Okay, in San Francisco. Yeah, and they, you know, they mm. found her and said, you know, we got this other cat named Spice. Next thing you know, she come to the turf where I'm, where I'm selling dope at. Ask me if I'm Spice One. I'm like, yeah, looking like, you oh, you want some crack and shit? Like, <laughs> I know you don't want no drugs. You don't look like you want drugs, but she just wanted a, a tape. So I gave her my tape and, you know, okay. took it from there. So then Jive stepped in. Mm -hmm. And then, you weren't actually signed to Too Short at this point. Mm -mm. Right, that was, that was already done. Yeah, that was, that was gone. Okay. So Jive came in and gave you like a long-term contract, right? Yeah. How many albums? Um, what, eight? Eight, eight albums. albums. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's unheard of these eight days. Albums. An eight album deal. Yeah. How big was the check back then? It was maybe what? Somewhere between uh, three and four hundred thousand. Okay. So you don't actually get that right away? No. Right. So you're getting a little bit of money now. So at that point, do you stop with the, with the dope selling and everything? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I, I, quit, I quit doing that. Um, um, yeah, that, okay, you, you're right. I quit doing that at that, at that point in time because I got my first check. Right. Well, when I, no, I quit when I got the first independent deal because I was making money when, when 187 Proof just released. Mm -hmm. I was getting money out. I got my first 15, 20 grand Dope. off rap. You know, I was like, okay, I don't even got to tell no more dope and shit. Okay. So during those five years between you, you know, fucking with Too Short to the point where you got this underground hit, any really bad stuff happen along the way? Um, between between me hook, plugging in with short and and actually having one eighty seven proof because you're, um, you're you're still you're still dealing this whole time like you're not making legal. Oh money. yeah, it was a it was a lot. I, it was a lot going on. Like that's when I learned, and it, that was in the middle of me learning how to sell dope, Jack. Um, you know everything. So you know, you're, robbing, <laughs> you're robbing people. At that yeah, point. I was out there doing it all. At a, as a matter of fact, the when Short picked me up from school one day, I wanted to drive his car, and he was like, "Nigga, you only sixteen. You can't drive. Nigga. You ain't even got no driver's license. You ain't getting my car took fool." He was like, "You can smoke a joint or drink a beer, but you ain't driving my damn car." You know what I'm saying? I'm like, "Well, give me a joint then." <laughs> so. You know, later on that night, <laughs> and sure, remember this? Check this out, man. Then later on that night, you know, I went and stole a car, looked just like the one he had. <laughs> and I drove in front of his mom's house and started doing donuts. You know, he was posted up and he came out. He was like, man, Chico, quit doing them damn donuts in that stolen car in front of my mama's house, man. Get that shit from in front of my mama's house. I was like, I told you I could drive, fool. <laughs> and I was hitting, you know, doing donuts, smoking up the block and shit, and drove off, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, man, he was, you know, sure, was, he was really like an uncle to me, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I was trying to prove something to him and shit. <laughs> okay. So, you go and get the deal with Jive. And you release your first album. And a lot of the songs from your, you know, your independent EP ended up on that album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, well, they definitely wanted to put 187 Proof and Welcome to the Ghetto and yeah. in My Neighborhood on there. Um, but I just had so much more material. You know, I was like, shit, I got, y'all want an album? Like, I can do a lot of albums. Like, I write fast, I record fast, you know. Um, now my, my record is, uh, I think I did like 16 songs in like three days. 
Wow. Like we just did um, the Platinum OG project. And so, you know, that, that, you know, I'm gonna go back and, re, you know, re-spit some stuff over or whatever, but three or four days, you know, I, I'll be writing, I'll be going off, man. I was on one and shit. Okay, and, and on that song, uh, Welcome to the Ghetto, you had that line, uh, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto. Yeah. Which yeah. Tupac later on used for I wonder if heaven got a ghetto. Yeah. I have to tell people, a lot, you know, a lot of people don't know that shit, man. You know, it's like, you know, me and Pac learned a lot from each other. You know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, he, he would call me and tell me, like, you know, I took your shit, fool. I got that shit on my phone. <laughs> and I'll be like, what? You know, I, and I'll call him and tell him, you know, I, I, I took some of your shit. My nigga, check this out, you know. Um, but we collaborated a lot on, on a lot of things, like even just chopping it up and talking. Right. So, so you come out with that album. And, you know, Lupe Fiasco said that that first album was the reason he wanted to rap. Yeah. You heard that? Yeah. I think maybe, you know, it's like when I prayed and, and wrote that song, that song 187 Proof, and um, it catapulted a lot of artists and it encouraged a lot of artists to, to write and rap and, you know, um, and I maybe, you know, maybe that's what the, the what it was for, you know, uh, for cats like Lupe Fiasco to, to be heard, you know. Yeah. Um, so then you drop your third, well, you drop uh, your second album, 187 He Wrote, mm -hmm. in 93. And then you dropped America's Nightmare in 94. I, I remember I bought that. That was the first yeah. Spice One album that, that I bought. And that had a Tupac song on it. But you had actually worked with Tupac way before then. Yeah. Okay, so how did you and Tupac originally meet? Um, at, at, uh, at my, at a, in my neighborhood video. Um, the Hughes brothers shot the video. Um, Pooh Man was there and Banks was there. And we were sitting around a garbage can with the fire in there and we was, you know, we was, we was spitting the next thing you know, Pac walk up like, Spice, what's up, fool? You know, and he was like, capping him in his b brain with the n nine. You know, he was singing a stutter rap. He knew words to all my songs when I met him. And that was cool, you know. Um, and I had, he had just did Juice. He had already done Juice. Mm -hmm. He had just did okay. Juice. It, it was, the movie was out popping. Like, it was the movie popping at that point in time. Okay. So you knew exactly who he was. Yeah. Because th that was, everyone saw Juice. Yeah. That's when the Hughes brothers said, we want Spice, we want, Spice, we want you to play old dog. Pop, we want you to play Sharif. And, oh, um, at that, at your? At in my neighborhood. Field. At the, at the, That's when they offered us the movie role. Aha. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So, so yeah. the, the Hughes Brothers, because the Hughes Brothers did a bunch of music videos before they started doing movies. They yeah. did, uh. They shot in my neighborhood video. But for Tupac, they were doing videos too. Mm-hmm. For uh, Brenda's Got a Baby, or yeah. Keep Your Head Up, or I, I forgot which songs they did exactly. So, so they're shooting the video for you. Tupac shows up, mm -hmm. and that's when they kind of met Tupac for the first time. Yeah, I think I, I think so. I mean, Aha! Yeah. But Tupac was already kind of a movie star at this point. He was point. already a movie star. Yeah. When we met, yeah. Okay, so you you and Pac link up. Yeah. And you guys started doing some music together. Um. Yeah, we started doing songs, but you know it was. <sighs> It was so much going on in East Oakland. Like we had the same enemies and shit. You know, it was, a, it was just you know, we. As far as recording, we wasn't even really tripping on recording because it was just so much shit going on <laughs> in the in the Bay Area. You know, as far as you know, uh, us having these same these enemies, these same dudes, uh, we was beefing with, and um, you know, we just talk a lot about that and ride around and holler at females all day, you know. You hear about the various incidences that uh, Tupac was in, you know, the, the shooting at Quad Studios and, and um, you know, and so forth. But, you know, I'm from the Bay and I have a lot of friends that were around him and stuff like that and they are telling me about all types of shooting incidences yeah, that were not. happening. <laughs> you know, like he would be at a studio and some dudes would pull up and start shooting at him. He'd, he'd, Run yeah. after the car and throw shit at the car. Like he was really wild yeah. at that point. Yeah, we it was the Oakland was crazy. So you know, you know, if you had some beef with somebody, you you might as well just plan on on getting shot at. You know, 
period. Like, you know, we used to play games. Like, we'd roll through the hood and see whose hood is, was, was more gangster. Just we'd throw bottles and shit and see who shot at us. That way we know what hood not to fuck with, you know. You guys would play this game? <laughs> yeah. You and Tupac? <laughs> yeah. So people actually <laughs> shot at you in these neighborhoods? Yeah, we were just like, well, we know not to go down here. <laughs> we know not to go fucking with them, dude. We are just... You so know. you're just lucky these guys had bad aim, basically. Very lucky that they had bad aim. Like, very lucky, dude. I'm happy. I'm glad y'all couldn't shoot. I'm happy. How many times you got, like, you and Tupac got, got shot at together? Well, maybe twice. Not too many times. Just just, just playing them games and <laughs> doing that shit. All right, so y'all, y'all were really wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... I mean, America's Nightmare, that's your third album at this point. Uh-huh. And that's the first time you and Tupac actually had a real song together that came out. Yeah. Right? How come you guys didn't record on the first or second album? I don't know. I think, I think we, both of us was like, we was in and out of jail so much. Like, you know. Oh, you were getting locked up during this time? Yeah, like I would be locked up and then, you know, I would get out and I'd be like, where's Pac at and shit? And I'd be like, he locked up. And I'd be okay. like, oh shit, you know. Because, I mean, the first album does what? Does it uh, go gold? Yeah, we did. We did like, what, 900,000? Wow, damn near platinum. Yeah, that first album. Second album? Second album did like eight, 800,000. Almost and platinum like, again. Yeah, and the third one, America's Nightmare, did 900,000. Okay, so why were you getting arrested if you have near platinum albums and shows and... <laughs> being stupid, just just being stupid, man. Just uh, Now that I look back, it was just me, you know. I was just, I had this drive just to gangster up, you know, just to thug out, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and so I, like, like, what were you getting arrested for? Um, Gun cases. So you're just carrying guns everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And then basically protecting myself, though. You know, I wasn't right. You know, out there tripping. I was just, I just had something. You know, like I had these, I had these two Glocks with the in, uh, extended clip, thirty rounders with the infrared beams on them and shit. You know, the cop pulled me over. He like, you know, you had thirty rounds. What the hell did you had a beam for and shit? You know, and I'm like, I was gonna hit a motherfucker with all thirty shots. I didn't want to plan on missing. I don't waste no bullets. I don't waste no money. <laughs> so you know, I was just, uh, I was too, you know, I was really on some, on some shit, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm glad, you know, I, I came to my senses <laughs> years later, you know. But we was on one, man. You know, it was the thug life was real, real as hell. Okay, so, so Tupac shows up on Jealous Got Me Strapped. Yeah. And then you know the chorus is I got my hand on my gun because they got me on the run which Snoop used later on yeah. on Two of America's Most Wanted. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you guys both say it, right? Yeah. yeah. Me, me and Pac just say that I got my hand on my gun because it got me on a run. Um, and, you know, Snoop, um, Snoop was a, a Spice One fan before, um, you know, I said like maybe Snoop was a Spice One fan on the first album, like he came to the the record release party um, when I got the platinum, and, when I got the platinum and gold plaques from um, from Barry at at, uh, at Prince's Club back in the day. Hmm. Um, and Snoop, Snoop was already was up there. Snoop was already he was mm-hmm. on death row at this point. He had just so I think he had just did um, one eight seven on the undercover yeah. cop. He had just the, did that deep cover, yeah, deep cover soundtrack and. You know, that's when I, I, I met him, right after the deep cover soundtrack. Okay. So so you and Pac uh, do that song. There was another song on there that says, which is, uh, tell, me what the, uh, tell me what that male like. And mm-hmm. it says featuring Tupac, but I don't hear Tupac any, anywhere mm-hmm. on the song. Okay, so that's just a typo, I guess? Yeah. He, he is, well, in that song, uh, Pour Out a Little Liquor, you can hear, um, Hear me saying, my cousin died last year when I still can't let go, you know. He'd call me and say, man, I took your shit, you know, I put the <laughs> shit on the song. <laughs> I was like, we took what? He's like, I took when you said, my cousin died last year and I still can't let go, and I put it in the song. Like, oh shit. And then and, and then he said, you know, he called me and he was like, he was like, I took your shit. And I'm like, what? And he was like, remember when you said the, uh, the, 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 the pit bulls and the bitch nigga eaters? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, when I use that shit, fool. I was like, yeah. So it was a lot of shit. We was just using shit. You know, he was Machiavelli. I'm Barcelona. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we was riding together on a lot of shit. So you roll with Pac. You guys are friends and you guys are doing music together. And then Menace to Society 
starts to get filmed. Yeah. And Tupac was originally cast as, you know, the dude who just got out of jail. Right. The Muslim dude. Um, Sharif. Sharif, right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've interviewed, uh, you know, Tupac's brother, Mo Preem, and he, he told me the whole story about how Pac was cast in the movie <laughs> and he showed up at one of the meetings. And, you know, MC8, you know, he, he also, you know, right. gave me another, well, no, I mean, a bunch of, MC8 and, um, fuck, what's his name? Hold on. Who, the main character, Kane. Uh, um, Tyron Turner. Yeah. 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 So, so Tyron Turner. Yeah. So I got, I got this story from Tyron, MC8, and Mo Prime. I got all three angles of the story. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, essentially the story I got was. It was a rehearsal because I drove Pac to the rehearsal the day that this all went down with, you know, it all started with them. It was, um, they was having rehearsal for the film and, you know, they wanted all the actors there and, um, I bought Pac there, so I knew we we wasn't that late. Just how you were like 15, 20 yeah. minutes late. It was like that. It <laughs> like was shit. You know what I mean? And they try to act all fly with Pac when he got in rehearsal. Like, we need you to read. Why aren't you here all the time? We're just talking shit. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, homie. <laughs> I just finished doing a movie with Jaddy Jackson, bro. <laughs> you know, are you, you, you know, and you know, I wasn't in there. I was outside when it happened. You know, because I was just getting to the spots, let him do, you know, he was off, boom, boom, boom. But um, that's what he told me was going down in there. They was starting to get fly. They was getting all slick and talking shit. I'm like, okay. Then Pac called him at uh, Spice One's video shoot. My take on it was every time we got ready to rehearse, he had an opinion about his character. Mm. Every time it came down to him to start reading, he would stop and just start going, well, why my character dank this? Why, why this, why that? So he wanted them to write in the uh, script why he turned Muslim. Show why, okay, what? Oh, okay, because I, I guess the, the, the depiction of it was supposed to be his little brother had got killed, whatever, but they wasn't gonna show all that. Okay. It was just the point of okay. view. So th there was more to the story than just he just showed up late and they... Yeah, okay. he, he didn't want that character. Or make my character so the audience can understand why I'm a Muslim now. And that's what angered him because he wanted his imagery. This is a movie about some gang banging ass living in the hood, okay? If you want me to play the, the righteous dude, then you going to fucking show why I turned righteous. Okay. You're not just going to give people the idea that Tupac is just this square Muslim dude. Yeah, you know, peace my brothers and all. Yeah. Fuck that. You're going to show a motherfucker why I turned Muslim. Okay. And they didn't want to do it. Okay. And that's what started to fall out. My version of it is Tupac came into the, the, the reading. We were all there, me. Uh, I don't know if MCA was there yet. It was me, um, Lorenz, um, Jada. We're, we're all in at the reading or whatever. And uh, Tupac, the, Tupac, we all started rehearsing and reading or whatever. And in the middle of it, Tupac was like, man, I, I don't know. I can't get into this care. It's just... I, I I need more meat. I need you know. I need some more you know. And then Alan Hughes was like, "Tupac, you interrupting the the, the session. Let's just finish reading." So we start reading again, and Tupac was like, "I'm sorry, I just can't. I just can't get in." And then Alan Hughes was like, "Tupac, why are you acting like a bitch? You acting like a bitch right now. You acting like a straight bitch. Let's walk. Let's step outside. This is what I hear." So Tupac and Alan Hughes step outside. Alan comes back in and Tupac never returns. That was the last time I seen Tupac. He wanted a more a stronger role. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to have fun doing the movie. He wanted to be, you know, he wanted to be a gangster, you know what I'm saying? I I I, I suggested that he play the role of Kane, you know. Okay. Because I mean you told me that they wanted you to play O Dog. Yeah. But but that didn't happen. Cause my manager never followed up with the 
with staying in touch with the Hughes brothers as far as I was I, I, I knew um, I had the script and everything I was reading the script um, any on my new song I say uh, I said uh, what, did I, what was I saying uh, uh, I said uh, something about losing a role and, and you know uh, like it, it really fucked with me you know what I'm saying when I thought about it because you know, after I see, you know, I see Lorenz Tate, and he, he did so many, you know, it catapulted his, his musical, I mean, his, his movie career. But he killed it. Yeah. And Did you say about my mama? Yeah, like, and I'm like, you know, I, I just wish they'd give me a chance to, to react that shit over, because, like, I know I could have killed that shit. Like, I know I could have killed it. It was, yeah. I wouldn't even been acting. It was just been some shit I had already been through and shit. Okay. I mean, because he he really did that role. He I mean, fucking it, killed it. You yeah, because you know when that like, that first like, Ugh, yeah, <laughs> when that first scene started off a menace, it was like, oh, it's gonna be this kind of movie. Like, okay, like you're you're in for a roller coaster ride with with this one. Well, it was it's one of my songs. Um, it's called Money and Murder, and it says at, at the beginning I I'll say you know should I get Saint Eyes or O E you know and then watching a movie and then. To see O Dog walk in there and say, "Should we get Saint Eyes or O E?" Oh, so they're they're using your melted lines. me, dude. <laughs> melted me all the way down. Like, ah, oh, that's me. Like, damn, that's what is that? Like, ah, oh, man, that's like that's what I say. That's that's what I say. I say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, shit. You know. Okay, so you don't get the role in the movie, but you get a song. Yeah, on we the get sound. the soundtrack. Trigger's got no heart. Yeah. Which uh, I thought was a standout song. Yeah, I, lo I love that song, man. But, I mean, your biggest song, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, as early as maybe even a few weeks ago, like the that line, "I'll be damned if I'm broke, old, pushing on a shopping cart." Right. That that line has been, you know, coming up in my head all these years when I think like something you don't want to be. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you like one of those like motivating kind of lines was yeah. like, okay, whatever happens in life, this is not going to be me. Not right going to be me. Yeah, dude. This is not. This is not what, what I'm going to do in my life. I'm not going to be pushing a shopping cart yeah. in the middle of the street right here. Yeah, nobody wants to to be to end up like that. You yeah. know, even even when I drive past and I see dudes doing that, yeah, I, it hurts I'll you. Just be like, like, damn, damn, I'll never want to be yeah, like that. Never want to be like that. So that album comes out, and are you and Tupac talking during this whole time? Um, during the Minister Society uh, soundtrack and everything, yeah, yeah, we was hanging out a lot actually. Okay, we was kicking it a lot more than we usually did around that time. What was he telling you about the movie and everything else like that? Because I mean, it would have been a great role for Tupac. He was, he was, he was literally, he was mad because because they, I guess his thing was he was saying they could have just called him and said, you know, we don't want you on a on a move on a film anymore, man, you know. Um, and told him man to man or over the phone. His thing was that they put it in the newspapers and didn't tell him. Oh, that's how he found out. Yeah, so he, that's why he was pissed off. You know, he was like, man, they could have called me and said something, dude. You know, but um, other than that, you know, we we didn't really we talk about it um, talk about it much because I was I was waiting for a, a call or I was literally working like reading the script like I was focusing on knowing my lines and everything, so. Okay, but you ended up not being in the movie. Yeah. So, the music video for Trigger's Got No Heart, was that being done before the movie came out? Um. Or after it was already out? Oh, it was, it was before. Before, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back then, soundtracks were a big deal, and yeah. they, they would shoot music videos before and everything else like that. They um, used the, the video in the, some, some of the commercials for the movie, they used the video. They played parts of, of my song in the commercial and parts of the video in the commercial for the movie. And you know, that was cool. Um, uh, and then it, it just seemed like after Pac and the Hughes brothers got into it, like a lot right. of that stuff stopped, you okay. know what I'm saying? Because the Hughes brothers are directing this music video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trigger's Not No Heart. They did the video too. And the shit popped off up there. Tupac showed up. Mm -hmm. How deep? Well, he, we was he we was there already. We was like, man, we was like 30, 40 deep, like different sets. 
we had Oakland dudes down there, some dudes from Compton and some LA cats down there. We was all just, you know, it was just shooting dice, smoking bud and shit or whatever. Um, and everybody was cool, you know, <laughs> until that shit happened. <laughs> and you know, I, I, you know, I never had nothing against the Hughes brothers. I just, you know, wonder why they never called him and said, you know, hey, you know, fuck you, nigga, we don't want you on the set of our movie or any of that shit, nigga, <laughs> instead of just him hearing it on the, okay. through the news, you know what I'm saying? So you're, you're with the Hughes brothers shooting this music video. Tupac is there. Mm -hmm. and, and no one at that point they're not talking to each other I mean they they just drove up I guess they was Pac and was down uh, at the bottom of the hill shooting dice kicking it or whatever and I guess they just drove up and um Pac he told me he said man I told him not to get out the car what do you mean you know like when they drove up and oh. it's like 30 dudes standing outside and you say I want to whoop your ass Right, but it's their video shoot. If you're going to be smart, don't get out the fucking car. But, it, but it's, the, it's their video shoot. Yeah. And so, you know, he told them don't get out the car. Once they got out the car, it was on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, wasn't too much they could do after that. All, they, all anybody could do was call the police at that morning. You know what I'm saying? So, so Tupac jumped on him. Yeah, I wasn't down there. This is what I'm hearing from my friends okay. and, and Pac. You know, okay, you, you didn't actually see it. Yeah, all I, all I seen was... Um, you know, Allen, I think, and he, you know, coming up the hill, and he had blood all over him like the Carrie movie. Oh, so what, he got hit with, like, a, a bottle or a brick or something? Or? I don't know, but he was bloody as hell. He was, oh, that, so he was really, this wasn't just a, a couple punches to the face. This was a oh, real. Yeah, that was some shit going on. Like an ambulance came and all kind of shit. Oh, shit. So it was and, bad. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I seen him chasing him up the hill, and I was like, hey. <laughs> Y'all gotta turn around. <laughs> well, you know, because the music video never comes out. Well, yeah, the minister, the Trigger Guys No Heart came out. The video did. Oh, so is it on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Is it the, the the black and white with the cut scenes? Yeah, you can see Pac all in there. He's still in the video and everything. Um, oh, hold on a sec, because when I saw it, hold on. They, that's what that's what I was trying, they actually left them in the video. I, was, I would think that they wouldn't even put him in there after that. <laughs> they left in the dude. He had like way, he had a lot of scenes in there too. Just, and, and what's interesting is that after the, you know, after they got jumped, they sued him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Mo Prem kind of described the scene. Just picture this. We, we at downtown LA at the courthouse. Uh, I forgot what happened in court, but all of us were in court. We got Johnny Cochran, I got Johnny Cochran represent him. So oh, yeah, actually, yeah, Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. <laughs> and then the fucking Hughes brothers come out, and we're all at the elevator. <laughs> we're all at the elevator. <laughs> and Pac saw let him have it. You bitch ass motherfuckers, what the? And Johnny's losing it, like, Pac, you gotta calm down, man. You gotta calm down, man. You gotta calm down, man. Man, fuck these bitch ass motherfuckers. Nigga, this thug life. You're gonna whip your ass again right here, right now. <laughs> Hey, he was wild with that shit, man. He he was funny and and, and wild with it, man. I, you know, um, we was in the parking lot before the the, the trial, before everything. We was in the parking lot. Oh, you were with I, him for that trial? Yeah, they wouldn't let me in, but everybody else that was down there with him, they used, you know, they had, you know, they, they went on the stand or whatever. And I think the Hughes brothers was kind of, you know, pissed off because, you know, a lot of cats got up there lying about what they seen. <laughs> they were, well, I didn't see nobody fight anyone. Okay, so you were actually, but you didn't get to go into the trial itself. No, they wouldn't let me in the trial. Um, and was, was Tupac found guilty for that or? <laughs> yeah, I think they sued him and he did like a few months or something. Okay. So, you know, every, you know, it, it was, kind of fucked up, you know, was, you know, because I liked it, the Hughes brothers, they was cool, and um, and Pac was the homie too, but they just had a misunderstanding between each other, and um, you know, that's how it, the cards fell, you know. I mean, Trigger's Got No Heart became a hit. Yeah. And an all-time classic. And you continued to, you know, to continue a relationship with Tupac after that? Yeah, we, we, he was really, <laughs> we started kicking it tough after that. Um, that's you know that's when we ended up we was hanging out a lot and uh, one of the one of our mutual friends died, 
and we ended up doing the song, Jealous Got Me Strapped. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Tupac continued to just get bigger and bigger. You know, I mean, he did Poetic Justice. He did, um, I mean, he was in Above the Rim, and his albums started going crazy. Like, yeah. you know, I Get Around came out, and then Dear Mama, <laughs> and then he started going to jail. Yeah, it was it was a lot. It was a and lot. Then, going and the on. shooting and the shooting happened at Quad Studios. Mm -hmm. Were you around him during that time? Mm -hmm. We was we was you know we was really we was really close at that point in time. Like that shit fucked me up. I was mad as hell. Um, I did three months in L.A. County, and um, I get out, and Pac has done All Eyes on Me and. Um, Machiavelli, hmm. and I was at the Mondrian, and he called, like, where the fuck you been, nigga, you know, and I'm like, I've been locked up for three months, fool. He was like, I'm on my way over there. So he came to the hotel, and um, that's when he started talking about everything, you know what I'm saying? He, we ended up going to his mom's house and chopping it up, and he started telling me, you know, everything that happened in that elevator, you know. Okay, and what did he tell you? He said, um, he said he went in there, he, he went to there, do this, do this song in the uh, studio, and he said he got to the uh, to the studio, at the bottom of the studio, he said it was niggas sitting all in the, in the, uh, downstairs with newspapers and shit. He said it was like some movie shit, you know what I'm saying? He was like motherfuckers was looking over their newspapers and shit like this, you know? Um, and, and, you know, he, he said, um, he figured something was kind of funny when he, you know, when he seen that, and he, and he, he said he get in the elevator, and um, as soon as, you know, he stand, get in the elevator, and a dude run up in the elevator, he pull out the pistol, pull out a 45, and tell him, tell him to give him his shit. And Pac said, you know, I didn't want to give up my shit, so I grabbed, I grabbed a nigga gun. And you know they start tussling with the with the with the pistol. He said, "Me and, and me and the dude caught eye contact when he shot me." And then he and then he said, "I just start holding on to the gun more, you know, struggling with the nigga." And he kept and he shot again. And he said he kept struggling. Then he said he shot one more time and he shot him in the nuts. Pac said, "That's when I fell to the ground." He said the nigga shot two more times and um, you know, and, and I guess hit him in the in the back or, or the shoulder and, and grazed his head at the top, you know. Um, and he, he, you know, he said, uh, niggas, they, they, they uh, ran out the elevator. He said, he, he said, he, he said he rolled over, um, and pulled out the, the swishers in the, in the weed and, and rolled up and started rolling a, a bloody blunt. Wow. He said, because he said it, and I, you know, and I'm like, you know what the fuck? You mean you mean he wrote a a, a a bloody blunt? Like what the fuck? You he said I want to die high. Okay, I fucking I can <laughs> I can feel that. I, I can yeah, dig I that. He said he got to the top of the elevator and um and the doors open and he said niggas was looking at him like they seen a ghost. Right, Biggie and Puffy were there. Yeah, and um. You know, he automatically was like, you know, y'all motherfuckers, you know, set me up and shit. You know, y'all could have told me them niggas was downstairs and all of that, you know. Um, as far as I knew, you know, Biggie and Puffy ran New York at that point in time. And, it, and, and they could have, if they knew that them niggas was downstairs, they were supposed to tell him. And now, if they didn't know that them niggas was downstairs and didn't know that they had beef like that with Pac, that's another story. But if they knew that that shit was going on and didn't tell Pac that them niggas was downstairs waiting for him, then it's just as much as on their ass, too. You know what I'm saying? And um, and that's just what it is, you know, as far as I'm, con I'm concerned. You know, if they knew, they could should have and could have said something. Yeah, I mean, and we don't know at this point whether they knew or not. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think Biggie had love for Pac. I really do, you know, because how could you not have love for Pac like that? You know, Biggie had love for Pac, but the the dudes that Pac was kicking it with wasn't cool. And I'm pretty well, sure, Haitian I think Jack Biggie tried to right. tell him, yeah, that them cats wasn't cool to, to ride with, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, um, Pac would tell me, and, some, and Pac, you know, some of our mutual homies would tell me, 
you know, hey, them niggas that pop hanging with ain't cool out there in New York, them Haitian, that Haitian, uh, Haitian Jack or Haitian Rick or whatever the nigga name was, Haitian Jack. wasn't cool to kick it with, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and Pac riding with the nigga. And you know, you meet a lot of people like that when you're doing this, this music. I met a lot of cats, you know, oh man, you know, Spice, let me hook you up with this jewelry, man. Let me hook you up with this, this female. Let me hook you up with this. With this car, with this thing, you know, with this stuff, and you know, you could pay me back later. And cats end up setting you up, or you end up getting set up by the bra that they they brought to you, yeah. or you know what I'm saying? It's so many dudes in this, in it, like you run into somebody and they they got it seemed like they the, like this dude is the devil, like he got every damn thing. Right after the shooting, Pac has to go to court for the Ayanna Jackson uh, rape yeah. trial, and I actually yeah. interviewed Ayanna. Did you see that interview? Yeah, I think I seen it. Yeah. And she and she was saying something about, like, I mean, I, as far as I know, man, I'm I'm not not to be lower myself or no shit, but I'm just fucking spice one. I ain't never had to rape a bitch or even think about it. Mm-hmm. That was Tupac, heartthrob. He right. Ain't, you know. Well, she didn't say that. Well, the story's a little fuzzy. As I'm turning around, he grabs the back of. My hair, at the time I had braids. I had braids in my hair at the time. So at the time he grabs the back of my head and he wraps his hand around my braids and he turns me toward him and he tur- he pulls my head down and I hear people coming in. And at the time I had, um, I had a black dress on. I had a black, I guess, yeah, spandex back then. I had a black spandex dress on. And I'm hearing this noise and I'm hearing these people come in the room. And he's like, relax, baby. And I'm like, what? And he's like, relax. And as I go to turn around and look back, because he has his hand in my braids, I can't physically move around. So I'm looking at him while I'm straddling him and I'm looking at him face to face and I'm like, and I hear, I hear people talking and I hear people saying, oh, you know, look at her and her ass is fat and this and that. And I'm looking at him dead in his eye and I'm like, what's going on? Like, I'm like, like, what's going on? And He's saying to me, he's like, relax, he relax, relax, he relax, relax, baby. These are my boys. I like you so much, I decided to share you with them. And when he said this to me, I started to, I, I was trying to lift my head up. I was trying to lift my head up. And as I was trying to lift my head up, he still had my hair and he was holding it. And I was like, no, 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 no. And he was like, no, this is no. And I was like, no, I don't want this. I came here for you. I don't want this. This is not what I want. This is not what I want. And you know, and I, I've talked to the road manager, Man Man, mm-hmm. about yeah. this, about this overall story. You know, mm-hmm. he, he didn't want to do an interview. Ultimately, we, we had discussed it. Right. And he basically said that Pac was with, you know, with the girl in the room. He walked out and the other guys walked in. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I got too. I got that and, too. and it's one of those things where, especially when you look at what's going on today, it's a little that fuzzy. Shit happens. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, that well, shit happens. yeah, she gave him head in the club, but a girl could be a hoe for you. That don't mean she want to fuck all your homies. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, I wouldn't say that Pac was totally innocent in that situation. You know what I mean? He, mm-hmm. he probably should have had more responsibility. And what's yeah, interesting... I, I wouldn't let them fools walk in there yeah, with the bra. Right. And, and what's interesting is that, you know, when I talked to Man Man about this, I said if... Because if, when she woke up, she was like screaming, like, oh, you let this happen to me. And Pac said, get this bitch out of here. Yeah. And I, I asked Man Man, you know, Charles Fuller, I said, if Pac had been cool with her and calmed her down, would none of this have happened afterwards? And he said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You let a female leave out the... Like out the that. hotel, mad yeah, she, like that. Ain't no telling what the hell she gonna do, you know. And he ended up going to prison. Yeah. Over that. He gets out. All Eyes on Me comes out. and He's the biggest fucking thing ever. California Love comes out. Yeah. 
and you're in jail while this is <laughs> while he I'm was recording this. Right, because I was wondering, he had so many Bay dudes on there. Yeah, I was locked up. Richie Rich, mm-hmm. Drew Down. I was having a, dude, I got out and, and almost fainted. I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> like, ah, it's fucking pigs. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all motherfuckers arrested me, had me doing three months. That's why I know all eyes on it seemed like it was conspiracy and shit because <laughs> we try to do a show one time and man me and tupac try to do a show in out here in in, in, in south central <laughs> okay that already sounds like a bad idea but man it was helicopters you, you didn't say la you said south central everywhere before we even got there i mean yeah. heli- i'm talking helicopters ambulance fire department every every piece of the government was there I wouldn't be surprised, FBI, CIA, ATF, all of them weren't there either. You know, it was ridiculous. We didn't even get to perform. So you and Tupac continued your, your relationship, and you guys actually recorded the night before he gets killed. Yeah, we recorded, um, we recorded, um, um, what was it, uh, damn, it was the last, I think it was the last song he ever recorded, I think, um, uh, Fame, and it was with me and Cocaine. And uh, we recorded the song. You know, he's like, man, go get cocaine. I went and got cocaine, brought, up, brought cocaine back to the studio. We recorded the song. And um, we went out. We was leaving the studio. And he was like, man, I'm finna go to Vegas to the Tyson fight. And um, he was like, the, sh- the fight is going to be real short because Tyson just going to knock his ass out. And then we're going to go party. Right. And he was like, so hurry up and get out there. So I was like, cool, you know. So I be ready to go home and get ready to get dressed and all of that. And before I can get dressed and get out of the house, bam, I get a call saying Pac got shot. I'm like, shit, I'm stop putting on cologne and, and, and motherfucking shoes and socks and shit. And was like, what the fuck? What did you just say? Like the home, you know, my manager, Chaz uh, Hayes, had called me and told me. And so I was like, well, shit, I don't even want to go out over there now. I'm uh, that's, I'm just going to lay down and go to sleep. You know, I'm tripping. Right, because when we all heard it, it's like, well, yeah, Pac always gets shot, and he pulls through and makes, That's a, exactly ma- how makes a song about it well, and talks more shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, and I remember even radio hosts, you know, in, in the Bay were even kind of making jokes about it. Like, yeah. Because no one really took it seriously well, at I that point. I thought he was going to die. But Nobody then a few, a few days later, did. yeah, he actually dies. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there, there thinking, you know, they was like, you know, you think he going to die? I said, man, his will to live is too strong. He is not tripping on that shit, you know. Well, you know, it's interesting because when you told me the uh, the story about the bloody blunt yeah. right before he died when he got shot at Quad, I interviewed Chris Carroll, mm-hmm. who was the first responder cop in Vegas. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't know if you saw this interview or not, uh-huh. but... You know, he had no idea who any of these people were. He was like a white cop in Vegas right. on, a, on a bicycle, like you know. I came up to him. I'm yell- I was yelling at him to uh, to open the door. When I came up in the car, I could see that there was bullet holes all in the side of the door. I pulled the door open, and when I pulled it open, uh, the guy sitting in the passenger seat, who turns out later to be Tupac, he kind of slumped out, came out with the door. So he's in the car. He's leaning against the door, and as I open the door, he kind of spills out. So he spilled out. And I just kind of grabbed him with one hand, and then I was pointing the gun at Suge with the other, because Suge is still trying to run up to me, and, you know, the guy's clearly a threat. He was also uh, just absolutely gushing blood out of the side of his head. But he's acting fine. I mean, he's not incapacitated in any way. In an instant, he went from trying to, you know, kind of squirming, looking at Suge, trying to get the words out to where you could tell he physically just gave up. He just wasn't able to do it. And he just, he just crossed that line into just quitting and being at peace. And he just kind of laid back and was calm and was no longer looking or trying to do anything. I looked at him once again. I said, what happened? Who did this? Who shot you? And now he's looking at me, so we're looking at each other in the eyes. And this is kind of the first time he's even acknowledging my presence. And uh, he looked at me, and I could tell he was, you know, he was getting the breath together to tell me. And he looked me right in the eyes, and we looked at each other, and he said, fuck you. And he said it just like that, with an emphasis on that F. So his last words were, fuck the police. <laughs> fuck you, yeah. 
I can see that being his last words too. <laughs> I mean, it's, we being so, you know, as 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 a black man, you know, you can't say nothing, do nothing but say fuck the police. Right, because you, you said know, a lot nowadays. Songs. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I admit there's it's some cool, it's some cool, okay police, but the majority of them be assholes. They like. What's they the mean. worst thing that uh, the police did to you? Um. <laughs> I would say, uh, I would say, uh, like when they, <laughs> they like planted some shit, you know, and, uh, you know, I got off, but they like planted some shit. Drugs? Yeah. And, and I, I, the gun was mine. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about the drug. Like, why would I have drugs in my car? I make rap money. You know, and they got thrown out. Like, mm. it, uh. Uh, magically dismissed and thrown out and shit. You know, I was like, them motherfuckers trying to, you know. But um, I just don't, didn't en encounter them a lot, you know. Um, tried to stay away f from as much as I could. I never looked at them like they was gonna protect me, ever. You know what I'm saying? I just looked at them like they gonna fucking kill me and arrest me and shit. So you had to protect yourself? Yeah. And hence the guns. It's like they put here to protect us, but who the hell is gonna protect us from them, you know? Yeah. And you know it's hard to even it's hard to even uh, uh, think that a, a policeman is gonna help you if you if you're in a time of the, only time I I got shot you know I'm shot laying in a fucking ambulance and shit and you know I'm looking like these motherfuckers they probably laughing and shit you know these motherfuckers probably think this shit is funny you know what I'm saying? that happened later on yeah way later and we'll, you know I'll, I'll get to that you know Flex made his comments about Tupac yeah and you went off. Yeah, he's he was an asshole, dude. Like, how could you talk about somebody who was born in jail? How you gonna hate on anybody who was born in fucking jail? You can't, you shouldn't, there's no way in hell you should talk shit about anybody that was born in fucking jail and then came from from that to, to superstardom. That's a long way to go from somebody, from anybody, you know, from from born being born in jail to superstardom is a long way to go. Yeah, I mean, I guess he said that. Pac was the reason for the whole East Coast, West Coast war, and mm -hmm. you know he knew that Biggie didn't really have nothing to do with it, but he still kind of escalated it. And well, the East and the West been been you know we always had a had a a, um, a rivalry. It's always been there, and it's probably always going to be there. Now it's, it's you know it's, it it was it's friendly now. It's cool you know, but you know even with the break dancing days and the, and the popping and the strutting days, mm -hmm. you know we always had rivalry uh, when. Even when the uh, uh, break dancers would come from New York to 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 uh, California and do that do that stuff, we would try to break a, break against them. It was always right. a, a rivalry right there. Um, did you cry when when you found about found out that Tupac had passed? Yeah, hell yeah, I did. I shot shot in the, I shot a lot of rounds <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, you really was just losing it. Yeah, I mean, I shot a lot of rounds off, man. I drove around the neighborhood and let off a, f a few clips. Like, damn, you know, I let the I would have let this shit off if I was anywhere around there. It ain't really I can, too much I can do now, man. I wish I was there, and, you know. Uh, I know I I would have probably been in the car or a car behind them. Yeah. Um, any of that, you know. Um, even when they jumped the dude, jumped the um, Orlando in the yeah. casino. I probably would have tried to prevent Pac from even going over there, let the little homies handle that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, did you hear that the Keefe D confession tapes? I haven't heard the tapes, but I heard that they, that dude was said he was sitting in the car when when, uh, yeah. when when Orlando was shooting at, at Pac and all of that. Everyone I've talked to, and this is way before the Keefe D tapes came out, but everyone I talked to around the situation who is connected to Compton, who's connected to the, the South Side Crips, they've all told me that Orlando did it. Yeah. I, I've, I've been hearing that, you know, the, oh, Shug put a hit out on him, was no. always the stupidest thing I've that ever heard. That was the dumb, because who, why, why would he sit in the car? Yeah, and he's twice like, Fox side. Man, there's no way in hell right. anybody is going to put a hit out on somebody and sit in the same right. fucking car. And, and the car was sprayed up. It wasn't sprayed. like a, it wasn't like a, no you know, a sharpshooter. No, it wasn't a professional. You can't trust the fool's aim like that. It was not was, a professional hit. The whole car was, fu was sprayed with bullets, front yeah. and back seat. Um, yeah, and everyone said that Orlando did it. So in case y'all yeah. wondering, I knew, I knew that, I knew exactly, I knew exactly what happened. 
the night it happened. I knew exactly what happened. I was just tripping on why everybody's fucking acting like they don't know what happened. Like, what the hell? Are you? Dude, it's simple. It's simple. Y'all, y'all just jump somebody who's known to kill people. Yeah. Right? It's who, who had multiple murder investigations going on at the time of that situation. You expect what, what, that. What, do you, what do you think is going to happen after you jump this dude? It's gonna be yeah, exactly. Like if 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 like if I get into some shit right now, if I walk outside this studio and and and, and it's a a, a crip or, or a blood or or MS13 or anybody you know, and I get into it with them, I'm gonna expect for them to come back shooting. I'm going to expect that. And if I don't, then I'm one of the dumbest motherfuckers that ever walked this earth. You know, and, 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 and if, if they come back shooting and I ain't here and somebody got shot, I know that's, that was their message. Yeah. Nigga, you just be glad you wasn't there. That's their message. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is no way you going to do something to a known gangbanger or a known, you know, real life gangbanger motherfucker and expect no consequences or repercussions. They coming back shooting. No problem. It's not even a question. Yeah, yeah, and that's for everyone who's wondering who killed Tupac. Yeah, let's just come out and say it's that. plain and simple. Orlando, Orlando killed Tupac. Orlando did the shit right there yeah. after. I'll, the I'll say it on tape. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, like motherfuckers is crazy for thinking that Suge would set up a hit and sit in the same damn car. I mean, I know the man is a gangster, but it ain't. It's a difference between gangster and stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's stupid shit to sit in the same car. Yeah, no, Suge had nothing to do with it. Suge was fucked up over the shit. You know, I, I had on a Tupac shirt and I, when I seen Suge one day, and Suge know how me, how close me and Pac was, and it looked like he was finna start crying when he seen me. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, you know, I knew even then before that, I knew that he didn't have shit to do with it. I was right. like, damn, yeah, man, let's just, just light up a blunt and just, you know. Get some drink and shit or something, man. I'll, I'll holler at you later and shit. So you do six albums with Jive? I did, um, I ended up doing eight. Eight albums with Jive? Yeah. Okay. Ended up doing eight and you continue with... to drop albums, your albums with MC8. Yeah. You know. How many albums total have you dropped? Total, probably about 12 or 13, maybe. Feels like you have more than that. It, um, so solo. Yeah, no, and the collabs. Yeah, the collabs. That and that. I would. That would probably go up to about maybe thirty. Or That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was gonna guess thirty. Yeah, yeah. So you continue to drop albums. You're now independent, and yeah. you're still you're still doing your thing. And now, then, yeah, definitely. And then the shooting happened. Well, that happened um, when I was kind of. I just got off the label. Okay. And there were still. Uh, people just saying, you know, hey man, we'll put your album out for you here. Here go thirty or forty thousand men here. We, do an album for me, and then they'll put it out. But they never showed me how to put the album out myself. I was signed to Jive for ten years, so all of that time I didn't know nothing about independent. So when I got off the label, everybody had ten years of independent game on me. Everybody, no matter who they was. Right. Everybody did. I yeah. didn't know. You know, the average Joe Blow knew more about independent or putting out his own record than I did. I had to f learn all over again or all over. And I finally learned the, how to release and put my own music out, got my distribution deal. Now, now, everybody who watching this interview who never knew Spice One as far as a businessman, now we on the evil playing field. <laughs> we on the evil playing field now. We on a level playing field. I know what you know. As far as releasing records and, and putting out your own music, now I know what you know. So I don't need nobody to pay me to put out my record. I put my own record out and get my own money now. You know, Now yeah. we on a, lead, a, a level playing field and y'all just wait, just watch. Just wait and watch. You know what I'm saying? Well. The shooting happened. You were, I guess, sleeping in your car? Yeah, yeah. This was in front of your house? Yeah, right after I'd shot. Man, I just did a, a, a photo shoot, and I had all my guns. Like, I had everything. I had 12 gauges, you know, nines, four fives, extended clips, uh, Berettas, 
beams, everything. Taking pictures with all of the shit, you know, I was doing a uh, photo shoot. And I got ready, I left the photo shoot, and my friends, you know, they was like, man, you know, you got six gun cases, dude. <laughs> don't, don't drive off with all that shit. Oh, the, okay, these were not all, like, legally registered? No. Like, okay. <laughs> no, it was like, don't drive off with that shit, man. You know, they was begging me, dude. Don't drive off with that shit. You got six gun case. You get pulled over, you're done. And you know, I, was, I started thinking about. It. I was like, yeah, I get pulled over. This shit, I'm gone. This shit, I probably never see me. So I gave the, you know, gave the pistols and the shotguns to the homie. Told him to meet me at the house. Get to the house. Sit there for a minute, and that shit happens. Like I got. So you're in front of your own house. Mm-hmm. You just fell asleep in the car. I guess for like 30 minutes or something. Yeah. The. Uh, the Jack crew was out, you know, how they, they got these crews that, you know, come out every other weekend and they, you know, the, the OGs would pick up the little BGs and, you know, ride them around and Jack and steal cars or do whatever. And, um, you know, I just happened to be in the way, right, sitting there, you know. Um, I did it, so I kind of was like, you know, <laughs> like revenge or what you call that shit. Uh, Karma, whatever the fuck, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I did the same shit a few times, so. Carjacking. You know, yeah. And so I, 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 was, I was pissed off, but I'm like, I started thinking, shit, you did a few motherfuckers like that, you know what I'm saying, so. But you actually shot at people like that? Yeah, yeah, I was tripping, dude. I was on one, like, <laughs> back in the day, I was doing dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Jacking motherfuckers, doing shit. Uh, well, I guess the guy who shot you was, a, and I'm looking at the article right now, was a white or Hispanic male, yeah. five feet, seven inches, dressed in all black. Yeah. He seen me, you know, I'm six foot one, and he five foot seven. He seen me and said, I heard, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I heard the shot, and then he ran, he, you know, he ran. And uh, I opened up the, up the car door and shit, started thinking, okay, what if you shot? Hold on, wait, slow down. I started looking around for where the bullet went out at, and it didn't have no exit. It seemed where it came in the car, but I didn't see where it came out of the car. And I started thinking, oh shit, maybe the motherfucker is inside me. Maybe I'm shot, you know. And I started tripping, and, and I looked in the mirror, and then I seen blood on my face right here, coming down here. And I was like, oh, the motherfucker shot me. And so I got up and went in the house. And, um, you know, that was, that was fucked up having to knock on the door and tell my mama I'm shot, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it was your mom's house? Yeah. You were shot in the chest? Mm -hmm. Well, I shot right here, it, uh, Ricochet. It must have been like a 25 or some old small, punk Small caliber, yeah. I'm glad the motherfucker who shot me was broke. That nigga shot me with some goddamn shooting range bullets. They was copper and shit. Oh. So, you know, the shooting range bullets are all copper and shit. Yeah. <laughs> broke ass nigga. I'm glad you was broke. I'm glad the motherfucker who shot me didn't have no money. I'm glad you didn't have no money to buy no, you know, no fucking Because right, that would have just gone, through, no shit, gone you know? through your face. Yeah, the, you know, the copper just, you know, binked me right here and then went through here and collapsed my lungs. So it don't matter how many times you shot. If they shoot you in the right place, one yeah, time your ass is no, dead. No, you hear people getting shot in the leg and they die. die. Yeah, I hear about that all the time. Shot and kill, hit an artery, you done. Was that the first time you were ever shot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, first been, time I was shot, not shot at, but first time I was shot. Okay, first time your luck ran out, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. We were talking earlier about going through neighborhoods and getting shot at. Yeah. <laughs> okay, did they ever catch the guy? Nope. And they still holding my damn jewelry down there at the police station. You motherfucking police, I need my damn jewelry, okay? Oh, they, they kept all that shit? Yeah. Hayward Police Department. <laughs> I need my jewelry back. I mean, th this was what year? This was fucking uh, 2007. Yeah, that's how long they've been holding on to my jewelry. Eleven years later, you still don't have your jewelry back. Huh? Still don't got my jewelry back. Okay. The evidence is uh, done. No more evidence, my fucking shit is over. <laughs> did you find out who did it yourself? No, I mean, my, my, some of my cousins was out there. You know, nephews out there trying to figure that shit out. You know, um, the bad part about it is, you know, I don't. I don't I kind of really don't want to find out because I'm a killer motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I say yeah. that on camera in the front of the police, everybody, you know. Like, nigga, you fucking dead. So. Well, he shot you. Yeah. It you is what, what it is like, at this point. You know, I, don't blame I, I really you. don't even want to know. And if a motherfucker tell me, then, you know, hey, that's, you know, 
you know, if you know and, and if you know and you want to tell me, don't even fucking tell me, dude, because I'm gonna end up doing something. Shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're lucky to be alive. Yeah, very lucky. You know, my kids are, are lucky. Um, you know, everybody I help out um, doing anything is lucky. <clears throat> you know, shit. The homeless man I give I gave my extra food to when I bought too much, he lucky shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? I, you know, a lot of people, I, I do a lot of things for people, you know what I'm saying? At one point you were signed to UGK Records? Yeah, we um we released that single that uh um the video and everything, because we had Pimp C behind in the um in the uh, song, and so we put, you know, UGK on there uh, just to do a shout out to tribute to Pimp C. Right. Were you guys close when he was alive? Yeah, we signed the Jive um, at the same oh, time. Oh right, yeah, because UGK was signed the Jive. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I, we signed I got the Jive that. at the same time. We did the uh, movie soundtrack. Did the Trigger Got No Heart, the um, Menace. Soundtrack. Oh right, oh yeah, because uh, yeah, Pocket, Pocket Full, Full of Stones, Stones. Yeah. was on the Menace. Mm -hmm. They come out to the bay. We Kick it and smoke and you know, oh, yeah. some bitches and kick it. And me, yeah, me and Bun are still cool to this day. Yeah. We, you know, cool dude, man. That's cool ass dude. Cool dudes you yeah. never meet is Bun B. And I hung out with Pimp C once right before he died. And he wow. was like the most entertaining. I mean, he was a character. Like, yeah. it was like story after story. And yeah. like, you know, yeah. And it's like these crazy ass, ridiculous, like, you know, stories that are actually true. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you know the night. Well, the the morning I woke up after my surgery, after I got shot, I woke up and the first thing I see on the news is is, is Pimp C. Pimp C died, yeah. Like I literally, it was like the timing was perfect. Like I I came up, I woke up out of the, whatever the coma, or whatever I was in, and looked at the TV and looked at the news, and it was Pimp C dies. The rapper Pimp C dies at the Mondrian Hotel and an overdose of blah blah. And, whoop, whoop. and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, hold on, I just woke up. Wow. I, Try to call Bun B and everything. It's just like, you know, it's, it's not a lot of us still around. You know what I'm saying? Um, shit, you know, I, to all my fans, you know, show me my love now. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to see it when I'm dead. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Go buy my records now, man. Real, real talk. Come to my shows now and, 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 you know, support my shit now while I'm, while I'm alive so I can see the love. Yeah. Shit. So you went at a bunch of uh, the new rappers. Like Lil, yeah. Lil Uzi Vert and Six Nine and, and Trippy Red, yeah. And uh, I'll be honest, like as a lifelong hip hop head, like you, you know, I mean, I've never been a rapper, but I've, I've been, you know, a DJ, a break dancer, you know, fucked around with graffiti, like you said, you know, yeah. and now yeah. I do hip hop for a living. I'm not mad at these young kids. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm not mad at them either. It's just when they disrespect us. And we still walking around this motherfucker. I gotta say something, right? Like and when I hear a nigga say "fuck the OGs," which Lil Yachty said, nigga, from the OGs, fuck you too, nigga. You know, and and fuck any of you niggas. I don't give a fuck how old you is. If you gonna disrespect us, if y'all want us to respect the future, y'all gotta respect the past, man. Did Yachty, up. did Yachty say "fuck the OGs"? Yeah, that bitch ass nigga said that shit. I'm I'm cool with Yachty. We actually that nigga said yet. fuck the OGs. I can't believe them words came out his motherfucking mouth. You know what I'm saying, nigga? You got your hair done like mine, like my hair was done in '93, motherfucker. Your shit looked like my hair was. Like you trying to look like me, nigga? You got the old dog braids, the same shit, but your bitch ass painting them red. What kind of shit is that? If you don't want niggas like me on your head, don't say shit like fuck the OGs, cause I, you know. We still walk around this motherfucker, dude. I mean, I, I looked around. I couldn't find that that exact quote. Do you remember when he, he said that? He was doing an interview with somebody, and he was like, "Man, uh, uh, man, uh, fuck the OGs, man. If I want to go around and say, if I want to get on a song and say blah blah blah, and it's gonna be and everybody dance to it, then that's just what it is. We ain't gotta be all lyrical and write no raps and and bust no lyrics and have a nigga. Please, all the other shit you said is fine." You can be non-lyrical. We don't give a fuck about that. Mm -hmm. But don't say, fuck the OGs. D don't say that. Because niggas like me going gonna to come at you, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know, I interviewed uh, Too Short, and he said that within the community, you got a lot of older cats. We, we all know the story. All the older cats going, that new shit, whack. 
And all the young cats is going, sit your old ass down. Everybody want that shit. I done heard all kind of comments from both sides that's just like, I don't fuck with you. Fuck it. You know, motherfuckers trying to say derogatory shit about legendary status artists and shit. Man, it changed, man. I just say if, 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 we, if it wasn't for us, y'all motherfuckers wouldn't even know how to roll blunts. We just trying to tell you niggas how to roll. As far as Triple X, Biggie and Pac. We trying to show y'all motherfuckers, man. You see Biggie and Pac did, but you niggas want to come out, get out here and troll? You want to troll? You will be next. You'll be in a casket just like them niggas, dude. Straight up. The world ain't playing with you. The world ain't playing with you. You can get out there and troll all you want to, but when, but when, but when that, but when that, when, when that thing pop up in the back of your head when you sitting in your, in your, in your whatever, your Bugatti or your drop Lambo or that shit, and then that, and then, and you feel that cold steel on the back of your motherfucking head, you are gonna wish you didn't say none of that shit. Get your money, have your fun, but keep the trolling shit to a level, man. You know, to a certain extent, you know, because it's certain motherfuckers out here. I, we ain't got no. It ain't gonna be me. I'm not gonna do nothing. Ain't nobody. My fans, Tupac fans. Those are the motherfuckers you gotta worry about. You know what right. I'm saying? And a lot of Bay Area rappers have gotten killed. A yeah. lot from Mac Dre. We trying to save y'all little niggas, man. I ain't mad at none of y'all niggas making money. We trying to save y'all, dude. I mean, how many Bay Area rappers have gotten killed like through violent a lot. means? Dre, Pac. You know, I, I've been shot, shot at. Uh, the dude from RBL Posse? Yeah, um, uh, Mr. C. Seagram? Said definitely Seagram. And, uh, and the homie that uh, was, is the Jacker? Jacker, right. I mean, I just interviewed, uh... Um, and, and homie, uh, um, uh, homie that's paralyzed, man, Keek the Sneak. Kick the you know, sneaks in a wheelchair. Kafani, Kafani is in a wheelchair. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we 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 just want to. If y'all motherfuckers put out your music and have fun, you know, um, and make and make your money. As far as all of this beefing and shit, you know that you know that's 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 not that's not the that's not the thing to do. The way to die is is laying in, in your bed around your family, uh, died of old age. That's how you supposed to die. All this other shit is bullshit. Yeah, man. Be be careful out there. Yeah, real real spit. And, and like I say, as far as y'all youngsters getting down, man, I ain't got no problem with that. But when you start saying shit like fuck the OGs, which, you know, that type of shit echoes in the back of our head because we done put in so much work, man. You know, um, we took hits. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, from from me to DJ Quick to MC8 to Ice Cube to, to Too Short to Ice T. Those words come out your mouth, fuck the OGs. What are we supposed to do after you say that? Say nothing? Okay, well, I'm not going to say nothing. I got a big mouth. Nigga, fuck you too. And uh, everybody else we cool with. You know, I'm cool with everybody. Even even Lil Yachty, we cool, homie. But don't say that shit no more because that shit ain't cool. You know, fuck the OGs ain't the way to go. <laughs> yep. Cause you talk about everybody when you say fuck the OGs. Mm -hmm. You saying OGs, that could mean run DMC, my nigga. That's LL Cool J. That's that you saying fuck the OGs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, come on, man. Curtis Blow, all that shit. You saying fuck all them? Please. I feel you, man. I feel you. You got a, a tremendous catalog, over 30 albums, hit songs, uh, a major contribution to, to the Bay Area where I'm from myself yeah uh, you know what i mean and, and you're still doing your thing still touring still putting out albums man i mean it's dope you know you look healthy you, you know i don't do nothing but smoke weed and drink alcohol there you go you know I, I don't i don't be popping pills and shit and you know, I don't do all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep my head straight. When, I, when a motherfucker come at me with a $300,000 or a few million dollar deal, I want to have my head on straight. I don't want to be on no fucking yep. no drugs and shit. I want to talk about my money with a straight head. Exactly.